Good morning, folks. Today we're going to see coronal magnetic fields slam the door on interplanetary magnetic fields. The planets in chaos hypothesis gets another boost, and the U.S. weather alerts continue. We're starting here on the northeastern limb incoming. Solar tornadoes standing tall, and the plasma is creating coronal cavities. When these are perfectly circular, they drive those videos about invisible spheres sucking on the sun. But it's the same magnetism that holds these tornadoes up that's helical, a vortex, and it clears circular curved areas above the filament itself, coronal cavities. Let's come to spaceweathernews.com and find a calm star. We see the dark coronal hole areas on the south, some pops just behind the limb, but nothing major. Sunspot maximum is ending, and potentially the cycle grand maximum. Even with those trends, this is some low flaring continuing here. The minor C-class flares we did get yesterday were from the incoming limb. Watch for the bright flashes there. The sunspots established on the disk are small and barely have any magnetic character to them. Beta polarity in the middle there. The few flares we did see come from the incoming limb. Hasn't met the earth-facing quiet effect just yet. Solar wind is calming, yellow speed dropping out allowing a bit higher density bunching of particles but that's the calm down and Earth's magnetic systems are recovering to a calm themselves. So we've said that we can't expect the same high seismicity we saw in Sumatra last week but we were looking for smaller quake upticks as these openings faced Earth, except they ceased to be openings. Well above the low level field opening, the coronal fields intruded to block coronal hole influence on Earth. Top seismic news of the last day, magmatic tremor activity beneath this volcano in Indonesia. Watch level rising. The OLR anomaly watches were not updated last night because again we have huge white swaths where data is missing. Smaller slices missing in the Americas as well. This makes it very difficult to determine if earth spots, cloud cover, or something else is driving the thermal outflow changes. Top story today is about jumping Jupiter a modification of the NICE model. We've done tons of work in this area, and it's always great to see the flood of scientists jumping aboard that train. Our solar system was a very chaotic place. We also had the February U.S. climate report come out. As you might remember from January Fly on the Wall episodes, we expected the last effects of the El Nino there. Almost the whole country was above average last month in terms of temperature. As the ENSO index peaked, the effects would peak four to six weeks later, and that is what you're seeing here. Speaking of the United States, for a couple days we've been making those warnings for the southern states. Storms, tornadoes, flooding, all playing a role for days on end, and it's going to continue. Weather Channel had this graphic up this morning, and I couldn't draw it up better myself. Exactly what I'd want you to see. Eyes open in the affected areas. Folks, it has been an amazing 20 days. The observers really stepped up. I'm humbled, astounded, and ready to deliver what you all deserve to have coming from this. The app is already in development. We've invented some new space weather indices, rewrote some others, and are very excited to create something fantastic. Thank you, suspicious observers. This is your castle we're building. Pressure and radar forecasts around the world, current aerosol conditions, and shots of our star to close. It's 4 a.m. here in the Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.